drone feed's just coming in now. Track that vehicle. Roger that. I need your team. Wheels up within the hour. No attack on an American will be tolerated. It is up to us to send that message. This is the recovery of Dr. Kimberly Wells. There's no cavalry. We are the cavalry. These are things from Kimberly Wells' cell phone. We should get an idea where they took her. Can you bring up the body cam? That's your man. Let him walk. He takes us to Wells. Maintain visual. They're moving her. Dalton, now! You're the only CEO I've ever had who doesn't see a woman first. I'm giving you a shot because I know you can make it. We're outmanned. We're outgunned. We didn't come this far to leave Kimberly Wells behind. No matter where you go, I'll find you. No matter where you go, I'll find you. Thank you. Thank you. What a fantastic trailer. And it premieres tonight, is that correct? Tonight. What do you guys, are you watching it? What's going on? Uh, I, what are you, are you going to be watching tonight? You guys can watch I, it together. I will be on an Mike airplane to flying back to film in the morning. So uh, I, I, I will be there in spirit. <laughs> You've seen it already, I hope. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I want to get your first thoughts on the scripts when you first got them and the characters. I'd love to start with you, Anne. Well, when we were approached uh, with his project by Dean George Harris, who's our creator, he, he came to us and said uh, we wanted, he wanted to do a show about the human resilience as seen through people who risk their lives every day for the lives of others. And of course, that's the military. Our show focuses on a special group of an Omega team of special forces, and we're called the Brave. When we were both asked to do this, I think um, when I was asked to be deputy director of defense intelligence, not only could I not say it, I needed to wrap my head around what it meant to be honoring the military in such a way that we were embodying the spirit that we believe keeps our country safe. Mike and I have become friends and also partners in being able to take on what we believe is at least a beginning opening to tell the stories that need to be told. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Yeah, um, th there's, there's an intangible that takes place that you can, never, you, you can never forecast when you read these scripts. It looks fantastic on the page. But, but after you've done this for a while, you go, Ew, but there's so many ingredients that go into this working that, you know, who, who are they going to cast? How is it? How is everyone going to gel? Is it, is it going to be cohesive? And from the second we hit this, we shot the pilot in Morocco, um, which is incredible. Uh, yeah, absolute, uh, absolute uh, gift because you can point that camera anywhere and you're picking up free production value um, and uh, but from the second we got there the cast as a whole and our team specifically through the training regimens and everything else that we've been put through gelled unlike anything else I've ever done um, and it's just been it's been this magical experience the whole way through of everyone just naturally falling into these roles that they're playing um, so we, we just feel blessed and honored to, to have the opportunity yeah, and, and I mean, Patricia is such a strong character. She's so fun to watch because she's so sure of the next move. Um, you, did you base that on anybody or was that all on the page? And, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Well, here's the thing. We're not a documentary for sure, but there are people who do do this in real life. And, um, you know, being a deputy director of the DIA, you are actually giving them the support that they need in order to control and be in charge of a mission, removing any doubt from them. But the intelligence is actually working with, at best, about 70%. So the other part of that that you have to, and what has been really fun for me to hone in on, is that Patricia goes with her gut. And um, I have those guts. I like, I like her a lot. <laughs> Um, but really what I'm trying to do is make certain that there is not one moment of hesitation when I am and giving an order or acting out uh, and providing information for him. Not one moment of doubt or hesitation. That's my job to make sure he feels good about what he's going to do. And to be able to play that, to be able to have that relationship as we all have with partnerships in our lives, business partnerships, this is a life and death situation and he and I are bonded as a team in that, and um, it's it's an extraordinary privilege to be able to do. Yeah, uh, Mike. I mean, the special forces operators look so. I mean, you guys look trained up. You guys look great on screen. I mean, was there a lot hey. of boot? 
You look fantastic as fantastic well. Fantastic as well. I mean, that. Okay. Fantastic. You know, I'm getting to that. Don't worry about it. It's easy for them. It's easy for them. They're SEAL trained. They wear tight camos. They, you know, they're special forces, specially operating. You know, it's harder for the DIA. We have to work with our brains. The DIA, we're brain, we're brain hot. Okay? I like that. I like that. You look, no, you look very And people hot. Calm streets. down. <laughs> Listen, he can't do any of it without you. So there we go. Thank you. We Thank go. So you. Mike, I'll repeat, I've, I've recorded it. <laughs> uh, Mike, tell me a little bit about the training for this. Um, they, they started off uh, on the right foot. They brought in um, a gentleman by the name of Mikal Vega, who is our, our military advisor. Mikal um, uh, ran SEAL Team 8 for a while and uh, is also an actor. So he brings with it that, that mix of the, the technical as well as the creative aspect, um, and, and knows how to, to talk with actors. Um, me personally, in my everyday life, I'm an avid shooter. I, I've done a lot of tactical training just because I enjoy it. Um, and so having some... There aren't many people that say that. No, it is a unique Usually. thing to hear out of somebody's eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just hiking up a mountain with 40 pounds on my back just because I like to do that kind of stuff. Uh, but they... But they, they <laughs> <laughs> they they set up this regimen the same way that they do in, in 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 the special forces where the whole purpose is to tear you down, take out those weaknesses, bring everyone to an even playing field, and then build them back up again. And still, you know, we're seven episodes in. If there is a free moment, we are Brazil, it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the mats. It's in the Again. weight room. It's live fire. And you got to get in there sometimes. <laughs> I've done a push-up. Yeah. She does the most beautiful push-up you've ever seen. <laughs> I like to get it right. Yeah. Um, so you guys are doing a boot camp of sorts. You guys got the crew together and actually trained together? We still do. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, we're, we have these 45-pound weight vests that we're, we will do hikes and runs up the mountains out there. You're already at 7,000 feet, so you're at altitude. Um, so it takes about three weeks for your lungs and your body to adjust to, to that altitude. But when you do, you're just a, you're a world beater. You know, I come down to New York, I'm like, <laughs> I've never this breathed so deeply. This is fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I mean, and uh, I was really impressed about the, the counterintelligence and all of that that goes on in those operations. Tell me a little bit, were you surprised at, I mean, building fake websites and that sort of thing? Were you surprised at what you learned through the process? Oh, I'm still learning and absorbing it. When I got the job, how did I prepare? You know, I just gobbled up as much information as I possibly could. But Patricia has an interesting job. She has to be the encyclopedia of what's going on in the pain in the world and probably knows more than anybody in the world what is happening that is dark. Mm -hmm. And um, hold, holding that kind of responsibility, just being able to play that, I needed to, I needed to learn a lot. We go to 13 countries in 13 episodes. Syria, yeah. we're, in, we're in Syria, we're in Mexico, we've shot in Morocco, obviously, but we go to Ukraine. There are so many things that I didn't even ever have come out of my mouth. One of the fascinating things that people are going to love, I didn't know what happened when an American, uh, when an American doctor got kidnapped by the Taliban. I had no idea. You get to see the behind the scenes of that. When you talk about the intelligence, what we're able to do, I didn't know that people could communicate with a person, just like they're having a phone call, talking through drone, drone intelligence and everything else, just like I'm talking to you right now. We have that capability. I, I love the get smart part. I think we really want to see all those like gadgets and stuff like that, and you do in this show. There is some part of the greedy part of like, ooh, what is going on that gets to be revealed. When you see these guys on the ground do what they do, not only is it like watching a ballet, but you cannot believe the fun that you're going to be able to have watching how they do what they do. It is quite miraculous. What are those, what are those uh, sets like? I mean, you have all these TV screens, you're doing other things. Are you able to see everything and work with that? Oh, yeah, it's like big screen central. But, but you know, it's like it's supposed to have all of this stuff. By the time you watch it, it does. When we're doing it, it's Blue screen with a couple yeah, of reacting dots. reacting to nothing. And a director going, okay, now you're talking, now the drone strike is coming in. Now it's coming in, you're five feet away. Now you're five feet away from the hospital. And you're all being able to watch it, and we're all just kind of uh, imagining. It's really fun. I finally get out into the field in episode four, and I actually get to have a scene with Mike. He's the best co star I've never worked with <laughs> until, <laughs> until Afghanistan. That's right. <laughs> That's, that's got to be really fun. And also, Mike, I mean, getting out to be in the field, you know, that's got to be fun shooting those scenes. Yeah, it's a blast. I mean, uh, the... Literally. <laughs> over and over <laughs> yeah. and over again. Yeah. 
Um, uh, here, here's to me what makes the show fantastic. It, when we say it's a military show, it's not your typical military show. It's not us running around in fatigues. Uh, this unit handpicks from Delta Force, from the SEAL teams, from the CIA, from various different entities around the government, and assembles these teams. Um, and as you can see, it's extremely diverse without trying. Um, the cast collectively speaks 11 different languages, all of which get utilized throughout the series. Um, we, we have the opportunity to bring, uh, you know, Tasha on board, our, our, who's a, a, she's a CST, um, uh, as our sniper, but also as a woman who allows us to infiltrate into places that there's no way that this, that this guy's getting. Um, so, I think for I mean that guy, white guy, like white gorgeous yeah, guy, I mean, like walking, yeah, that's yeah, right. totally into his Syrian bathhouse. <laughs> into yeah, can't Syrian do it. It's a it's female bathhouse. Yeah, <laughs> can't do that. Um, so it allows us the opportunity to the, the 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 type of missions that we run. It's not it, each one's a different thing every week. It's not catch a terrorist of the week type thing. I think what we've seen in in the sort of the global landscape right now is that. There are lots of bad dudes the world over trying to disrupt the flow of, of this world. And what we're seeing is it's, it takes the whole world coming together. So whenever we go to one of these other countries, we're interfacing with their intelligence units, with, with their uh, special operations units. Um, to show that, you know, as Dean Jarris, our, our creator, says, that, that evil has no boundaries. There's no national borders to it. It's touching all of us, uh, and it takes, it takes the whole world to kind of come together to, to lick this thing. And that's what's, that's what's enjoyable to me, is seeing that collaboration globally through the show. Absolutely, I, I love, well said. Um, tell me a little bit about the cast getting to hang out together. Is there, I mean, the scenes are so tense, they're so dramatic. I mean, is it nice to get to let loose a little bit every once in a while? Well, first of all, they're the hardest person. They all collectively are so hard to get a date with because they're <laughs> like, I'm like, can we go bowling? And they're like, no, we're hiking up a mountain for three hours uh, in the rain. I'm like, okay, well, I'll be eating pizza. <laughs> And um, uh, when do I just take pictures? That's all we want. <laughs> we have, exactly. They don't need anything. It's inspiring to be around them. Everybody's going to be in better shape watching this show. I swear to God, because you do not lift up that piece of bread when you're sitting next to Mike. You're like, if you can do it, I can do it. <laughs> um, but we do enjoy each other's company and um, find that we've we've had a few Sunday fun days where we get together and uh, there, we have incredible. We have an incredible group of people from all over the world who have incredible talents. They not only their languages, all the girls sing like like Rihanna. I mean, it's insane when they get together and somebody sits down at a piano. Sophia can do basically Good anything. Gracious, you have. she can play piano. You say, can you play golf? Yeah, I was uh, gonna be a pro. Or do you play tennis? Gonna be a pro. What should I invest piano? in gonna next, Sophia? Oh, like, great. Uh, Good. <laughs> So it's fun. We do get together. Uh, we did have a nice cornhole competition. You know, we're we're a group, Who won that? group of people. Clearly, <laughs> me. <laughs> because the man from the south wasn't there to play. <laughs> That's the problem. Sometimes Mike does Otherwise. get to fly home to his family. Not often do they let him go. Um, but we, uh, I think that's one of the fun things. I kind of get annoyed when people are like, I like my cast so much. I love them so much. But uh, I mean, we kind of do. I mean, not all of them are here, so you can talk if you want to, you know, get fancy. We some could stuff. make some stuff up. Unfortunately, none of it would be true. I They're know. actually decent people. But we people, went two so. stepping. Well, you took everybody two stepping. They didn't invite me. <sighs> Whatever. You got a two step? Yeah, he was a Okay, uh, oh, I'm oh, not we gonna make you do oh, it. Oh, right listen, listen. Come on. Okay, one, once in a while. Put your dancing boots <laughs> on. Once in a while. We've been horse racing together. We've been. We we have a couple of drinks together. Yeah. Um, but we like to cook. Hattie's an incredible, uh, incredible chef, and he he came to our house and and, and made just a, a feast. We care so much about this show, and I think we love to be able to express to each other how grateful we are because I think every single one of us feels like you're working for me. The fact that you're doing what you're doing every single day, that makes me not only look good, but creates a show that is going to blow people's minds. And we're very appreciative of each other for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to see the rest of the season. Uh, Mike, it sounds like this train is pretty intense. Are you guys competing? Is there a lot of like uh, throwing elbows while you guys are running up those hills? Um, <laughs> 
Well, there's a, a yeah, right. There's a there's a dark humor, you know, that you develop that that kind of uh, runs runs amongst. That's the, why the you group. don't invite me. Yeah, <laughs> it gets dark. Um, but uh, I, I I gotta say, it is a it is it's a it's a supportive environment. Um, again, that goes back to to Macau, um, creating this environment where people can, from many different ability levels, kind of come together and excel and push your body to, across the board, you'll, every single one on the, on this ground team will tell you that it's enjoyable. We look forward to those, the, the training opportunities because that chance to push your body to its limits to see how far you can take it. Um, yeah, I roll from it. It's, uh, <laughs> we do enjoy it. Um, and, no, they uh, do. It's extraordinary. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the, the training is, it sounds like it's work, but it's actually something you may, it may be hard to get us all on to, at the, the same, to the same dinner table because of schedules. But if there's a training opportunity, it's like, yep, in, 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 everyone's in. So, that's amazing. I mean, I got to see the first episode. I'm so excited for everybody else to see it tonight. Um, I will say the ending is a little shocking, and I want to know what happens next. Is every episode going to be like that? Is it is it going to be pretty taut all the way through? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, not every <laughs> shocker. There may be a cliffhanger at the end of it, <laughs> um, <laughs> but not not every episode is going to have that same. There's going to be certain things that track through. That being one of it. One of the one of the, one of the threads that kind of goes through the series, but then there's also it, it's also a great platform to dive into uh, these individual missions. You're you're with us as the mission unfolds, as it unravels, and as it as it wraps up. You, we don't take you home. We don't let you see us feeding our children if we have any. We don't. It's it's about being with these folks and how they react in the middle of these extremely stressful situations and how that affects them over time throughout the course of a deployment. Um, uh, so, so it allows you to kind of jump into the show where you want without having to go, well, I haven't seen the last four, so I don't know exactly where we're at right now. Um, uh, it's just great old school action and, and smart espionage. It's really- It's like really Mission fun. Impossible. I'm, That's kind I of what it is. It's, it really up. is. I mean, I say Vogel's better than Born. Like this show. I mean, he. he, he wow! Shots so, fired. I like it. So it's not, that not an easy cover. thing to pull off, and uh, he does. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you guys watch any films or any sort of things for inspiration towards Man. what those are going? I mean, <laughs> you leading up to this series. <laughs> what time? You have no time. You're working too much. Um, tell me a little bit about you know where you'd like to see the characters go from you know what we see in the first season. Do you know, I think a lot of people wonder about Patricia because when you meet her, she is, we, we come to understand that she has just uh, lost her son 10 days previous to when we first meet the team um, in Afghanistan. And um, I've been a member of the Afghanistan World Foundation for 12 years. And it's incredible to be able to have a, a part for me now that has come full circle in my life to be able to honor the continuous war that is going over there, but that I get to hold uh, the understanding of what it is for this team to make a decision that they made privately sometime in their life to serve their country above themselves. And to be able to show human beings who do have, it doesn't mean there is an effect, it doesn't mean that there aren't sacrifices that they make, that's what our show is about. Um, but there is not one of us on this team who would choose to not, and to put her in a situation where it's that extreme, and of course, they take me out of the office and I get to go to Afghanistan and stand on his grave and um, actually do a show with Mike uh, where we are doing an intense interrogation in Afghanistan. Um, yeah. it's, 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 it's quite heavy and, and wonderful, but our characters are going to go, like I don't even think we could possibly imagine the imagination that goes on in the writer's room because yeah. I wouldn't dare to say where I want my character to go because they take us places I've never seen before and I'm happy to be in their hands. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Mike, you have uh, military friends and, and family, right? You came from a military family. Can you tell us what it's like to be able to portray them on screen? Yeah. You know, the, the, the responsibility is heavy on me uh, personally just to make sure that we're... I think so often Hollywood does these military shows where they want to they wanna infuse their sense of what the military must be going through because we're Hollywood and we are all-knowing. 
the truth is we know nothing um, and, and, and we want we want this show to to dictate for itself what these folks are going through and you know um, uh, Captain Dalton who who I'm playing in the show I ha uh, one friend in particular who is on an Omega team exactly like the one we're portraying and he he said to me you know that that when when stuff gets the most, it's regular, regular everyday life that he struggles with. It's the, it's the calm and the security that we all seek in our lives that shakes him up. It's when the bullets are flying, when stuff is chaotic, and it looks like there's no way out. He said that's when everything just goes, and it gets real clear for him. Um, and he always said that he's like, I want to. I always wanted to be on the mission where everything could go the most sideways because for some reason I always felt there was protection over me in those in those scenarios. Um, I didn't want to be on the easy one because that's when stuff seems to really get bad. Um, and I think for me, it's a lot. It's a lot like that with with this character. And and I'm proud of the show that we've made. I'm proud of the way that we've portrayed these heroes. Um, and we've talked about this a lot. For us, success for this show, it means so much more than success for our careers or our families or television. Success for us is about shining a light on what these veterans and what these heroes are dealing with every day. Um, the, the, the veterans issues, the, the depression, the PTSD, the suicide rates, all of these things which we have not been able to get a handle on. Um, the hope is that we can, we can um, bring those things to the forefront and start addressing them as they should be addressed and show, show what they deal with and what gets them to that point. Um, and so that's our, that's our hope. That's our mission. Well said, well said. I love it. I love it. Time for audience Q&A. So we'll start with the first question. Hi there. Hi. Uh, thank you both for being here. Um, sorry, I'm going to like hit you in the head. Um, I'm curious um, to bounce off of what you just said about the um, kind of the pressure that you experience of portraying people who are, you know, they exist in real life, maybe not specific characters, but groups of people fighting these small battles in the big battle that's happening. Um, is that stressful for you to portray them in a way, like you just said, to, to do them justice and to be able to go home at night and say, I did a good job, or is it always like a constant battle of, of drawing that out of yourself and, and doing them justice? I'm, a, I'm an extreme perfectionist, and so there is, it's never going to be good enough, um, but I can say that, you know, we're, you're out there in 100 degree heat with all this kid on and all this gear on, and you're doing things time after time after time, and you stop and remind yourself and say, oh wait, no one's shooting at me. And, and these guys and gals are doing this day in and day out on 15-month deployments without showers, without food, without the, uh, you know... the Craft service. Without craft <laughs> service and, and the pleasantries that, that we all enjoy. It's in those moments where you pull back and go, shut up, Mike. Like, <laughs> yeah. see, suck it up and, and, and go out and leave it all on the field. And I put my head down every night knowing that I've done that, knowing that and most and all of us will say the same thing that you know that we've created a show that's smart, that's entertaining, that is diverse, that brings in so many different viewpoints um, and mixed with fantastic action. And you know, to know that my friends, my friends serving on these units, when I got the show, they just, they just the calls and the texts poured in, so glad it's you, man. So glad it's you. And so having their vote of confidence is a, is a, is a huge thing for me. That's awesome. Fantastic. Uh, next question. Hi. How are you? Um, so it's great that it's, the show is uh, shooting on location and the real locations. Uh, do you, how much does it portray like some of the, the culture or some of the actual, like the way the locals were living or, or, or are like... Uh, in that show, like, and interacting with the military there? Yeah, I mean, there's very much uh, a, um, a, a stress put on d making sure that we have the local, the local cultural sensitivities uh, well covered. Uh, again, you know, this first episode in Morocco, it was, uh, I mean, it was like the Wild West. We're shooting in wide open fruit markets with zero crowd control, with people from many different walks of life, with a massive language barrier 
trying to wrangle all of these things into a shot that somehow makes sense. Um, and the chaos of it all only helps only helps the uh, you know the action that takes place. Uh, and then we go to the Ukraine, and then we go to, we're not legitimately going to these places. We're going to them via Albuquerque, New Mexico. But um, within, within where, we're, where we're portraying these, these different areas of country, there's a country, there's a lot of attention to detail put on making sure that we have, our next episode, we're going to Mongolia uh, on horseback. And so just seeing the pictures of how they're designing things on what, uh, what, what the vision for these things are, it blows my mind every time. I think also to honor, to speak to what Mike was saying earlier, part of this show is about talking about the unity of our world. We often are in America going, we're Americans, and that's all there is. And I think right now it's very poignant and important to be talking about this whole world is one. We are we are the brave, but we're not a self-congratulating team that says, hey, 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 this is the patriotic America. This is saying we are a team. There are 136 countries with teams just like this. We need to go and show as authentically as possible what's going on in the world so that we shut up and stop thinking we're alone here. Through our stories, you get to tell that. We're very dedicated to making sure that we start waking up. I always often say about if I can do my best, I am as awake as Patricia is. And I would like to wake some people up and say, let's start union, let's start the harmony. And um, I believe that this will do that. It doesn't mean there aren't a lot of bad guys to go after and think, you know, that's what our show is about. But until there is, the chaos is over, we're going to have episodes to tell stories about. Absolutely. Uh, one last question. Thanks for coming. Really looking forward to the yes, premiere sir. tonight. Question, going into the series and now that you've shot numerous episodes, can you share any things that have struck you that you've learned over the series or perceptions you may have had of how the units operated versus, you know, what it's really like? Well, I, 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 again, being privy to a lot of these stories beforehand, th there wasn't a lot that was going to surprise me. But when you find yourself in those actual situations and, and you know, you think about what, it, you know, like McCall always says, our, you know, a plan never survives first contact with the enemy. So you make your plan. You go in, but you go in knowing that you're going to have to think on your feet. You're going to have to adapt to what's happening. Um, it's like trying to get your kids to school. That's, that's right, yeah. This well, is the time work. we're going to leave. This is, well, <laughs> no, okay. Um, you know, you're going to wear this. Just kidding. No, wear what you want. Um, so it's constantly, it's constantly, constantly changing. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a great quote uh, that, that George Orwell has where he says, um, people sleep well in their beds at night because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. Um, and I think we forget about that. We look at, you know, we look at what's going on throughout our country right now, throughout the world right now. The beauty is we have the right to speak our minds, to protest, to take a stand, and we're afforded that right only because rough men and women stand ready to defend it. And it's what I love about the military, it's what I love about a show like this, is that it, it puts people from many different viewpoints and walks of life under one umbrella and says, when we're here, when we're doing this thing, we're doing it as one. We're doing it as one people, as one mind, and it protects the right that we have to go out and speak our minds. Um, so I think, I think for me, keeping that in the back of my mind when I'm doing this show and, and, and all the things that may come because of it, it enhances the respect that we put into these storylines. And, and I think it's a lesson for all of us um, to realize, yes, we speak our minds, but we have people to thank for that. Very true. <laughs> I've learned also, it's so bizarre playing a character, you do kind of become a little bit more like your characters that you can't help it. I am so paranoid. I was walking through the airport no. last night. I come off the I come off the plane. I'm looking around. There's a pink suitcase in the middle of the hall. Nobody's I find myself like going around it like a camera move. Like where is it? Who's connected to it? Where's Mike? 
I got to call him. I'm literally like thinking, do I call Mike? Because he probably could save me. He's the one person I think I probably could call. Like, I'm in trouble, Mike. As long as there's a camera around. I mean, <laughs> oh, no. I'm glad I didn't call. But the, but the, pro, the engaging in so much information and so, so, uh, so much specificity about danger, really, and how to solve it, it's, it's, it's incredible. I was laughing to myself as I'm going away, you know, on that automatic conveyor belt, and I'm looking at the suitcase like, how fast can I go? Do I start to... It, it has affected me in different ways. I do see the world differently, and I think that's part of what this show is going to do. We are going to start seeing the world differently because we're going to start seeing the world. Mm. And once we see the world, we know the world, and then we stop treating people badly, hopefully, mm. because we see that we're all the same. How can you do that without a show that says, you know what, there's a, co there's a country called Ukraine. Have you ever heard of that? That's what I want people to start talking about when they're at their water coolers or whatever the heck it is with their children. NBC says this is a family show. Why? Because we need to start understanding that we are a part of a whole unified world, not just America. And I think it's going to do a lot. It's done a lot for me. It's done a lot for me even talking to my kids, my teenager, who I get to be able to talk to about what is truly going on so that we can hopefully become friends. Mm. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that. Well, guys, the show is The Brave. It premieres on NBC tonight. Yes. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Give Thanks. another round of applause. Nice.